Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the square root of a complex number, maybe the square root of an imaginary number. So i is known as the square root of negative 1, so what does the square root of i mean, right? So if you replace i with the square root of negative 1, so you're probably going to get something like the square root of the square root of negative 1, which means the fourth root of negative 1. But is that going to be the same thing? That's a really good question. You can definitely check it out when we talk about different ways of solving this problem. So let's start with the first method. So to find the square root of a number, we're going to use the standard method. For example, if I ask you to find the square root of 4 plus 2i, you would probably set it equal to a complex number, a plus bi. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. And then you will square both sides and try to solve for a and b, right? a plus bi is the name of this channel, remember that. So why don't we use the same method here? So let's go ahead and replace square root of i or set it equal to a plus bi. When we solve for a and b, we found the square root of i. Make sense? Because the square root of a complex number is also a complex number. But why do I keep saying the square root? And we're going to talk about that as well. So let's go ahead and square both sides. That should give us something like this. And let me go ahead and put that first, a squared and then b squared, i squared. One thing that you should never forget is i squared is negative 1. That's why i is considered the square root of negative 1. So b squared i squared is just going to be minus b squared and then we have 2abi and that's equal to just i because the square root of i squared is just i, right? Now, we have two complex numbers that are equal. What does that mean? That means the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. But notice that there's nothing on the right hand side for the real part. So the real part is 0, which means a squared minus b squared is equal to 0. That's a good thing to have. And then the imaginary part is the coefficient of i, which is 1. It doesn't include i in it. So from here, we get the following system. a squared equals b squared and ab equals 1 half. So far, so good. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve this system. To solve this system, we can start either way. Uh, second or first equation doesn't matter. Let me go ahead and split it up first. What does a squared equals b squared mean? If you put everything on the same side, that would mean a squared minus b squared is zero. From there, by you know doing the difference of two squares, you get a plus b and a minus b being equal to zero. In other words, a is equal to b or a is equal to negative. And you could intuitively come up with this because if you think about it, if the squares of two numbers are equal, either they're equal or they're opposites, like five and negative five. And of course, that works in the complex world too. Well, maybe, maybe not. I could be wrong. But the thing is, in the real world, it definitely does work, right? And A and B are real numbers, obviously, by definition. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these separately. For example, if A is equal to B, that means we can replace A with B or B with A. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Let's go ahead and replace A with B. So that's going to give us B squared equals 1 half. But this has two solutions. If B squared is equal to 1 half, B can be 1 over root 2 or negative 1 over root 2. And also remember that we came from a equals b, so that should equal a value, and then we would get like two ordered pairs here, which means this implies our number is 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2i, or negative 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2i. We get two solutions, and we're going to check our work, but let me go ahead and take a look at the second piece. What happens if a is negative b. If a is negative b, from here, we can replace a with negative b. We get negative b squared equals 1 half, which means b squared is negative 1 half. Uh-oh, b is not a real number. But b is supposed to be a real number. Contradiction, we can't go with this. So the only thing we have is this one, which gave us the two solutions. So what does that mean, though? Well, it means that we have we seem to have two solutions, but are they both solutions? I think this is a good time to talk about the square root of a complex number because a complex number has two square roots, but 
only one of them is the square root. And of course, we want the complex world to agree with the real world, at least uh, in the realm of real numbers, like square root of 4, right? Square root of 4 in the complex world, it has two square roots, but 2 is considered the principal square root because it also agrees with the real world. Make sense? So here, which one are we going to take? Probably the, the one with a positive real part, which is the first one. So 1 half... One, I mean, one over root two, plus one over root two i, is the real, I mean, not the real, is the principal square root. You could also write this as root two over two, plus root two over two i. And when we do the second method, hopefully you can refer back to this. Okay, what does that mean? It means that if you take this number and square root it, I mean square it, sorry about that, you should be getting i. Let's go ahead and test it. If you, and by the way, uh, if you're going to square both sides, it's probably easier to just go off of this. Forget about this. So let's square this one, 1 over root 2, plus, because that's a little easier to do. And I'm going to go ahead and square this. It'll give me 1 over 2. And then 1 over root 2 i squared, that's going to be minus 1 over 2, plus 2 a b. And now these two cancel out. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, so these 2, 3 also cancel out, leaving us with i, which verifies our finding. So, this means that we did actually find the square root. Of course, uh, we're not asking for this, i to the power 1 half. That would be different because this would mean the square roots of, or square roots of i. Make sense? Hopefully you get the difference. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is also very cool. The only limitation for the second method, let me warn you about that, is that this doesn't apply to all problems. For example, if you were finding the square root of 3 plus 2i, you probably wouldn't be able to use it. You could use it with the half angle. I don't know if you want to go to that extreme, but uh, it's not as pleasant. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this in polar form, considering the argon plane and again, you can look at the lecture notes for details. But i is basically on the imaginary axis, and it's going to be on the positive section. So i is here. It's one unit away from zero. And with the real axis, it makes an angle of pi over 2 radians. In other words, we can write i as e to the power i pi over 2. Because any complex number z can be written as r times e to the i theta, where theta is the argument, the angle. R is the modulus or the absolute value of the number. So this can also be written as argz, which is argument. Of course, when you're talking about the principal argument, which is the smallest angle between negative pi and pi, then you want to write it with the uppercase A because that's pretty standard as far as I know. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. But I can be written like that. Cool. But one thing that you should always remember there are infinitely many ways to write it. So in general, we should add 2 pi n to this to represent additions of multiples of 2 pi. So what does that mean? We're trying to square root this. And to square root a number, what do you do? You cut the angle in half because you're looking for something when squared will give you this number. So it's, it's going to be e to the power i times pi over 4 plus pi n. Now, if n is 0, this is going to give you e to the power i pi over 4, which is the same as cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. And that is root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 i. Uh-oh, that looks familiar, doesn't it? And if n is equal to 1, then we get e to the power i times 3 pi over 4. You could also write that, you know, a little differently, but I guess this is fine, right? Actually, not 3 pi over 4. Sorry about that. It should be 5 pi over 4. That's what I meant. And if you think about 5 pi over 4, this is pi, and that'll be that. So this would be negative root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2i. But again, if you're looking for the principal square root, that should be this one. Okay? Let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha. Uh-oh. Wolfram Alpha also agrees with our finding, but the principal root 
and the other one is also indicated. Yes, 5 pi over 4 can also be written as negative 3 pi over 4. And this is the numerical value approximately. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.